What's good, you guys? It's RTA of YTS Gaming back at again with another video. Today, we have Creative Gaming's video about Dead Island 2 and how to get all eight legendary weapons easy, all locations. Let's check it out. With legendary weapons being the best weapons in Dead Island 2, there are a wide variety of these weapons. Ones that explode, ones that do all kind of damage. These weapons are the best weapons by far and I put together a perfect guide to show you quickly and easily how to get all eight of the legendary weapons in Dead Island 2. This guide is going to give you very quick overviews. Feel free to skip around to find the weapon you Man. need. If you just need one, straight to the point. The first legendary weapon is going to be Bloodthirsty Body Count. It is essentially an AK style gun that's going to be the best gun in the game. To get this, you're going to start off by going to Venice Beach. All you have to do once you travel to Venice Beach is make your way over to the tower to start this available quest. If you've already been to that tower, you can actually fast travel directly to it. Once you get here, you're going to talk to W.O. Rodriguez. Rodriguez is going to give you a quest called Cremains of the Day. Now, once you start this quest, it's just going to involve going out back behind the tower and lighting three fire pits on fire. Once you complete this, you're going to go back and finish this quest. And once that's completed, you're going to make your way on the map to the safe location just south of this point. And you're going to go inside this door. Once you go inside, you're going to see Lieutenant Ford over here just mauling an innocent victim. You're going to go ahead once you kill him and pick up the redacted item that he drops, starting the new Lost and Found quest. Once you start that quest, it's just going to involve going back to the tower. You're going to go the same way you did as the first quest. So exit this door, go right around these crates. And then right behind these crates are going to be a couple of enemies. All you have to do is kill all of these enemies. One in particular, once you kill him, will actually drop a key, which you can see on the ground here. All you have to do is pick that key up. You're going to go in this crate right next to all of these enemies. Break these breakable crates go right around them and this chest right here will actually contain that legendary weapon the legendary AK bloodthirsty body count the next weapon is going to be the legendary double-sided axe Krakatoa now this axe can be obtained very easily by just doing a couple smaller quests to start you're going to need to locate over to Ocean Avenue once you get to Ocean Avenue, you're going to need to walk in here and actually complete a couple of these missing person requests. You're going to have to complete enough of them until you get this quest that shows up on the wall called Missing Steve. Now, once you receive this Missing Steve quest after completing enough of the missing quests before that, you're going to then find your way over to Monarch Studios. Once you fast travel to Monarch Studios, you're going to walk into the first studio set. And then you're going to turn right around and on the bed, you're going to see a note. You're going to grab that note. And then you're going to head right over to the kitchen to inspect some items. All you have to do is get 100% inspection rate and you can just inspect the couple of items I'm inspecting here. I believe it's four of them. Find this last one here on the stairs and you're already at 100%. It's super easy. Then you're just going to follow the quest marker to locate Jimmy's trailer. Once you get rid of the enemies outside, you're going to go inside Jimmy's trailer, open this door. Then you're going to kill Sergio here laying on the floor. Once you get rid of Sergio, you're going to pick up this phone item that is on the ground. Then once that's picked up, all you have to do at that point is make your way over to Beverly Hills. Just travel over to Roxanne's house. Once you travel here, just follow the marker and end up at this spot right here on the map. You're then going to look up on the balcony and Steve is going to be on the balcony. All you have to do is the couple things he asks, which is bringing zombies and killing them for him. Once you complete that quest, you're actually Same going to get Krakatoa. Enough. The next legendary weapon is the one, this is a claymore sword that's probably the best slashing weapon in the game, giving the highest sharp damage and an awesome weapon to use. In order to start this quest, what you're going to do is start off by fast traveling to Monarch Studios yet again. To first start this quest, you're going to need to have beat the Soundstage 3 quest. And if you've already beat the game, you're going to need to also beat the Soundstage 7 quest which involves going to Sarah's trailer. You're going to have to report to Sarah. She's going to send you on a couple smaller little missions that you have to complete. Once you complete that quest fully, you're going to travel to the Santa Monica Pier. Once you reach the Santa Monica Pier, you're going to go right here on the map, right next to the bumper cars. As soon as you reach the bumper cars, you're going to start this new side quest called Like and Follow. You're going to just look right up and talk to... You're just going to look right up and talk to Amanda, who's standing on top of this shack. She's going to give you three smaller quests in order to complete this main quest or tasks, which include electrifying zombies, knocking their heads off and knocking them off bridges. Once you complete all three of these tasks, you will complete this quest. All you have to do is go back there and talk to her. And then finally, to complete this series of quests, you're going to need to go to Hollywood Boulevard. 
once you travel to Hollywood Boulevard, you're just going to find her and follow the quest marker. You're going to talk to Amanda and she's going to, again, have you defeat a bunch of different boss type enemies and a bunch of different zombies. This spot is particularly hard and it honestly took me like an hour. So make sure you have Damn. enough healing. And once you beat all these bosses, hour? you're then going to have to go to talk to Sebastian right inside the reaging shop. You're going to start this Beacon of Hope quest. It's just going to ask you to walk right down the street, talk to Sarah, and then Sarah's going to have you go inside the metro here and just walk into a door and basically just find an item for her to help fix the spotlight. Now this door was already open for me because I opened it earlier, but there are just some fuses that you have to break in order for the door to open, and I believe there's three of them. So you're just going to find that spotlight filter there. You're going to go back to the spot that Sarah was and then you're just going to fix the spotlight and then eliminate the zombies that come up afterwards. Once all of these zombies are eliminated, you're going to be able to talk to Sarah and then go back and talk to Sebastian and finish that quest and get guarding the one, the legendary Claymore. The next legendary weapon is going to be the skillful party starters. These are brass knuckles that are modded to basically explode every single zombie that it touches. This weapon is actually really fun to use and you can just blow through enemies like crazy and just blow them all up almost every single time. To start this, you're going to need to fast travel to Ocean Avenue. So once you travel to Ocean Avenue, you're just going to follow this exact path that I take. You're going to walk straight out the door, go down a set of stairs, and this is going to eventually lead you right to a bathroom. Now this quest set is very easy and doesn't take a lot of time, so I highly recommend just doing this one really quick and knocking it out. So you can see, just follow my path into the bathroom, and there's going to be an item laying on the ground. Once you pick that up, you're going to start the Drunk and Disorderly quest. After that, you're then going to fast travel to Venice Beach. Once you make it to Venice Beach, all you're going to have to do is go to this location right below the first fast travel, and you're going to find yourself outside Rose's Tattoo Parlor. All you have to do is get rid of a couple zombies outside, hit the push switch at the front door in order to open this up. Once you go inside, you're going to find a couple zombies, one named Grant. You're just going to get rid of the zombies that are in there and pick up the item off the ground. Once you pick that up, you're going to need to go to Venice Beach at this location right outside the front of the shops. Once you run around long enough, a zombie named Cole will appear. Cole can be taken out and killed very easily. Once you get rid of him, he's actually going to drop another note that you're going to need in order to advance and basically get ready to finish this quest. So once you get rid of him, pick up the item off of the ground. After you pick this item up, you're then going to want to go and fast travel to the Santa Monica Pier once again. Once you travel to the Santa Monica Pier, you're just going to find yourself at this spot right here. There's two last final steps before you get the weapon. You're just going to walk over here towards this pier grill place. You're going to jump and go across this table and there's going to be a note right here on this table. You're going to pick that up and then you're just going to walk out and go immediately to the left Everybody and you'll see this boss this named Jordan who spits fire. All you have to do game. is defeat him and once you get rid of him, he's actually going to drop a primary piece for this quest, which are a set of keys on the ground. These are the keys you need to actually get inside the car to actually get the weapon to get the weapon itself. So finally, we're going to go and fast travel back to Ocean Avenue. Once you fast travel back to Ocean Avenue, again, just follow my path. You're going to go jump down right here. And once you keep going, you're going to find yourself going back down a way that a main quest line took you. So down these stairs through a little storage area. And then once you go through the storage area, you're going to end up in a parking garage. So you can see if you just follow my path here, you end up in a parking garage. You can see there is a white vehicle right here. So all you have to do is walk up to that white vehicle, go to the trunk and use the keys that you just got to get the party starter brass knuckles out of them. The next legendary weapon is going to be the Brutalizer Machete. This is the best machete in the game and does a ton of basic sharp damage and it's fairly quick with its swings so it's a very good machete to use and is definitely the best one of its type. So in order to get this Brutalizer Machete legendary weapon you're going to fast travel to Beverly Hills and go to this house right here and you may have already done some of these quests but you're just going to go up to Francesca and she's going to give you a series of maybe five or six quests that involve getting body parts for zombies and putting them in this bucket. Like I mentioned, if you've beaten this game already, these quests are very easy because you more than likely already have the parts that are required for these quests. But there's two tricks to these quests that I can give you that are actually very much help. So if you don't have parts for a quest, this is the first tip. Make sure to go into your Zompedia and look through and hit X or square and look at the details for each one of these enemies and it will show you the actual items that it gives you so you can find the zombie parts that you need and be able to tell what zombie you need to kill to get those parts this way. 
This way, in case you're curious or you need some sort of mutator heart or something like that, you'll be able to tell what item you need. And also, you can look at the map here and look at different areas to see where these enemies spawn and their hotspots. So if you need to get a mutator heart, you can look at that mutator hotspot, sort of like I had to do fast travel to this location and then go and kill the mutators that way now if you're doing one of these quests and you complete it and you don't see another quest you don't have to fast travel and run a bunch in order to reset these quests for the next one to pop up here's a little trick all you have to do is go and return to the main menu and then once you join back into the game and load back into your character the next quest will pop up as you can see instead of having to leave an area and go back and run all over the place this made it a lot quicker to do this stuff also if you're farming these parts that you need and you're at one of the hot spots for one of these creatures if you don't get an item or even if you do get an item you can use the same trick and kind of back up and return to main menu and load back into the game what happens is this will it. actually reload all the zombies back in and spawn them all in okay. so you can kill them again making this farm a little bit easier so that way you can just farm these spots super quick once you get done with that francesca will eventually be outside the back of her house with a final quest as soon as you talk to her she will give you this legendary item the brutalizer the next legendary item is the Blood Rage Knife. This is a very quick knife that's going to be able to make quick work out of any regular zombie in the game. And some of the mods it has on it are very, very good as well. This item is actually fairly easy to pick up. First, you're going to start out by fast traveling to the Santa Monica Pier. Once you get to the Santa Monica Pier, you're going to walk right outside of the lifeguard shack and you're going to see a zombie down here. This zombie's name is Dante and you just need to kill him in order to get the item that he initially drops. So once you kill him, an item is going to drop on the ground and that's going to start this quest named Fool's Gold. Once you pick this item up, you're going to need to ransack Randy's locker, which is right around the corner to the right. So hit X on his locker and you will get on to the next step in this quest. The next step in this quest is involved going by the Ferris wheel to that fuse spot. You don't have to use the fuse spot. There's just a note on the back bench over here that you need to actually collect in order to keep on going with this quest. There is one more spot you need to visit. The next spot is going to be this spot right back here where the shops are. There's a little corner back here you can walk into and there's another item you need to pick up off the ground. And finally, you're just going to make your way back to the initial building where this whole quest started and go to the edge between the border of the map and that building. And there's going to be a safe stuck in the ground right here. Once you get here, you're just going to need to kill the remainder of the zombies that end up spawning. And after you do that, just unlock the safe and the Blood Rage Legendary Knife is yours. The next legendary weapon is Big Shot. It is a revolver that shoots exploding rounds that explode when they hit enemies or objects. This weapon, I can say, is very, very good within the game, and you should definitely pick this one up. So in order to pick this one up, it's fairly straightforward for the most part. It just needs a little bit of time. You're first going to start out by going and fast traveling to Bel Air to Emma's Mansion. Once you do this, after completing the main storyline, you're going to get this quest called It's Not Your Fault, and that will be given by Luciana. So once she gives you that quest, you can then fast travel over here to Brentwood Sewer near Patton's. Once you fast travel here, you're going to need to collect seismometers. So you're going to have to find the keys for the boxes and unlock the boxes themselves to get the data. So you can see right after you leave, there's the first one initially right here to your left down the hallway. The second one is going to be located down this tunnel as, as you keep going. And most of these are all marked. So you're going to be able to tell where they actually are. Now once you go straight in this tunnel, you're going to eventually hit a wall and take an immediate right to circle around and there will be keys to the second seismometer here. You're then just going to turn around and keep going straight as far as you can. Once you hit a wall, take a left and this seismometer is right here behind the bars. That is the second one. The third one after you keep going is going to be up the stairs in this room. So you can see you're going to be able to pick up a note right here. But the key is actually located in the room underneath this. So you're just going to jump down, go in this room walk right through the fire, take a right, and then there's a room right here that is filled with a bunch of these little pockets. All you have to do is go and search all of these meat slurries. I believe there's three or four of them. Just search all three or four of them that there are. And once you get eventually to the last one, you're going to be able to see that the key is actually found in this final one once you search them all. So now that you have this key, you're just going to go and unlock the third seismometer. And the fourth seismometer, after you keep going a little bit farther down, is going to be in this bloody, horrible area. And you just have to go to the end of this area and kill the seismologist that's at the end. And he will drop the keys to the fourth seismometer. Once you get rid of him, just turn around right there at the end. It's going to be highlighted once you pick up the keys. The last seismometer is there. 
and then you're going to have to fight your way out and kill all the enemies in order to make it back. Once you get back, turn the quest in at Luciana and you have the legendary weapon, the Big Shot. And finally, the last and best weapon in my opinion is Emma's Wraith, which is the almighty hammer that you get. So this last legendary weapon is really easy to get. It's simple and most of you probably already have it. It's for completing the main quest line. So all you have to do is complete the main quest line and you get it. It's the best hammer in the game. You can see here, once you finish the story mission, you get it super easy, nothing to be said here, just beat the game to get it. If this guide was easy and simple enough to follow, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe on the left, and check out one of the videos on the right. Definitely give them a follow and subscribe. It was definitely an easy walkthrough to follow through. I do some of these myself. But yeah, I would like to add on the one for the, to get the small knife. I don't know about you guys, but that part kind of lagged for me. Or glitched or whatever, because... It seemed like I got all the parts, but it act like I don't have all the parts. So maybe it's just a bug that's in my game. I don't know. But I just want you to be aware of that. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe if you are new. And I'll be back with more reviews.